We are continuing our lesson on continuity, section 1.5b, continuity, limit-based continuity. And in the past lesson, we looked at the definition of continuity, and we had the three parts. First, does the function exist? If so, what does it equal? Secondly, does the two-sided limit exist? And if so, what does it equal? And then three, does the function equal the two-sided limit? If they are equal to each other, if all three are yeses, then my function is continuous at x equals that value, a, whatever that value is, 1, 5, 2, negative 3. And we've seen some places where, uh, particularly where our function did not equal our limit, We've seen some where the two-sided limit did not exist because the two-sided limit, for it to exist, the left-sided limit must equal the right-sided limit. So if our left limit and right limit have different values, then my two-sided limit does not exist. Therefore, my function is not continuous. We're going to look at this a little bit more. Up to this point, we've tested the continuity at a particular given point. Moving forward, we're going to find out well, if I want this to be continuous, what must the value be? And essentially, you're going to be working with equations. So you're solving systems of equations. Similar to questions you saw on the assessment over 1.1 and 1.2, where you were asked to find the value for A that made the two-sided limit exist. Since the left limit must equal the right limit, you set that up as an equation and then solve for the variable. Similarly, we're going to do that here, where we will eventually solve for m and k by setting up a series of equations. These questions are going to step us through this one baby step at a time, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Part A specifically asks, what two limits must be equal in order for the function f to be continuous at x equals negative 1? Obviously, for uh, the function to be continuous, the left limit must equal the right limit in order for the two-sided limit to exist. We can communicate this abstractly as the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left of f of x must equal the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right of f of x. But we can also look at that in more detail, more concretely. What is my left limit? Which function do I use to determine my left limit. And the values that are left of negative 1, or lesser than negative 1, are 2. That's my y value is 2. We'll go ahead and color code this a little bit. This one is 2. And my function is defined for values greater than negative 1, approaching negative 1 from the right. For this function, this is dealing with values x is greater than negative 1. So that's mx plus k. So 2 must equal my right limit, mx plus k. Let's go ahead and do one more thing right here. What is my x? Well, my x is going to approach negative 1. So we'll change this to negative 1 here. That easy. Part B asks, which two limits must be equal in order for the function to be continuous at x equals 3? So our previous question asked about x at x equals 1. We took the definition for less than negative 1 and the definition for greater than negative 1. Now we're going to use 3. So abstractly, by our limit existence theorem, I know that for my function to be continuous, my function must equal my two-sided limit. My two-sided limit must exist, and for my two-sided limit to exist, my left limit, as x approaches 3 from the left, must equal my right limit, as x, approach, as x approaches 3 from the right. More concretely, which of these is my left limit, which of these is my right limit? So color coding again. My limit as I approach 3 from the left, or from less than 3. Here I have x less than 3. This is the portion that's going to approach 3 from the left, or from the less than side. And that is m 
x plus k. But what is that x? That is that x is 3. It's approaching 3. So I'm going to plug that 3 in. And that must equal my limit from the right as x approaches 3 from the right or from greater than and this is my greater than function so when I approach x from greater than 3 my y value is a negative 2. So far I've set up my equations but now I need to find m and k. That I'm solving for two variables means I'm going to need two equations and I see that I have those two equations here and here. And now this is just a system of equations. So we'll set this up. 2 equals simplified negative m plus k and simplified 3m plus k equals negative 2. And looking at this, to me the easiest way to solve this is to solve both for k and set them equal to each other. That would give me m. I'm going to use that method. You could also set these up as a system of equations and subtract, eliminate k, solve for m. Several different ways that you can uh, do this elimination substitution. I like the substitution method. I'm going to do that one. So to get k by itself, I'm going to add m to each side. k equals at 2 plus m. And on the right, to get k by itself, I'm going to subtract 3m. Now k equals negative 2 minus 3m. Transitive property says if k equals 2 plus m and k equals negative 2 minus 3m, then 2 plus m and negative 2 minus 3m must equal each other because they equal the same value. Now I can set these equal to each other. 2 plus m equals negative 2 minus 3m and solve for m. Subtract m, add 2 to both sides. Now 4 equals negative 4m. Dividing m equals negative 1. I can plug that into either of these functions here. I like this one. It's simple. Therefore, k equals 2 plus negative 1 and k equals 1. Now I've done what it asked. I've determined the value of m right here, and I've determined the value of k right here, such that my function will be continuous everywhere. It'll be continuous across negative 1, and it will be continuous across 3. We're on our last function, determining um, really we're going to find values of m and k so that the function is continuous everywhere. But we're going to step through this again which two limits must be equal to be continuous at each of these potential points of discontinuity. I could have discontinuity at negative 2. The nature of a piecewise defined function is that it could cause a jump discontinuity. I could also have a discontinuity at 3. So we want to check primarily, does my left limit equal my right limit? Does my left limit equal my right limit? Now you might notice in the previous question we didn't check the value of the function. If we go back up here, we should be checking that my limit, my two-sided limit, equals my function. And this doesn't specifically ask for that, but we can tell automatically that it would still be continuous because this left limit at negative 1 is also the value that it's defined for. So if my left limit equals my right limit, it will also equal my function because it's defined at one of those values. And similarly for 3, my function was defined here. So my left limit equals my right limit also equals my function because my right limit has the same value as my function. So with that in mind, we don't need to check our function values because we can look here. My right limit at negative 2 is defined and my left limit at 3 is defined. So as long as I have an equals, I can make this continuous. If one of these were, uh, say, just a less than and no equal to, then I would not have a definition at 3. 
from the left, and I would not have a definition at 3 from the right. That's not the case here. We do have the equals, so it is defined. All right, so our first step asks which two limits must be equal for the function to be continuous at x equals negative 2. Those are our left limit, our limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left of g of x. And that must equal my right limit, my limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right of g of x. Now what are those limits? Well, my left limit is going to be the less than. Here's my less than. This is what it's defined as. k x squared plus m, but where x is evaluated at negative 2. Okay? And my right limit greater than negative 2 is here. That's 4x plus 1. But x is being evaluated at negative 2. That's it for part A. Part B similarly asks about our continuity at x equals 3. So I'm going to look for my 3. Here's my 3's. 3 and 3. My left limit or my less than limit my limit as x approaches 3 from the left must equal my right limit, my limit as x approaches 3 from the right, because for my function to be continuous, going through our three steps again, for my function to be continuous, my function must be defined, my two-sided limit must exist, and this is what we're working on significantly here is, for my two-sided limit to exist, my left limit must equal my right limit. And that's what we're doing with our piecewise defined function. And then finally, my function must equal my limit. Okay, so my left limit must equal my right limit. What are those limits? Well, my limit from the less, from less than 3, is here. That is 4x plus 1. What is my x? Well, I'm finding the limit as x approaches 3. That must equal my right limit, my limit from greater than 3, which is kx minus m. And again, x is being evaluated uh, as it approaches 3. So now we have our limits left limit and right limit for the function to be continuous at negative 2, and we have our limits, the left limit and right limit, for the function to be continuous at 3, and we want to find m and k so that it'll be continuous everywhere. So there's one value of m, one value of k that makes all of these true. And we'll go ahead and simplify our functions first. Negative 2 squared is going to give me 4k plus m negative 8 plus 1. Simplify that more in a moment. And my function to be continuous at 3. And for my function to be continuous at 3, I have 12 plus 1 equals 3k minus m. We can simplify these just a little bit plus m equals negative 7, and 13, 3k minus m. Again, I like the substitution method. I see these m's by themselves. Alternately, I could use addition. This would actually be really easy because the m's are already opposite. I'll go ahead and do that one. Uh, 4k plus m equals negative 7, 3k minus m equals 13, therefore 7k equals 6, and k equals 6 over 7. Don't let that scare you too much, but we do need to find m. I'm going to use this function and solve it for m equals negative 7 minus 4k 
Therefore, m equals negative 7 minus 4 times 6 over 7. m equals negative 7 minus 24 7. Negative 7 is negative 49 sevenths. Negative 49 minus 24. We're going to scoot through here. And that will give us negative 73 sevenths, if I did my math correctly. This is a little bit more unusual of a problem, a little bit of fractions there at the very end. But the very important thing here is we identify which left, uh, our left limit has to equal our right limit, what those limits are. We evaluate those at what x is approaching. Some students will get stuck leaving that x there and just kind of go, I don't know, x. Uh, so we're evaluating the x at these values here, the negative 2. And in these cases, we evaluated the x as the limit was approaching 3. We take the limit through our just direct substitution. Then that provides us with a system of equations in order to solve for each of our values. This was m, and this was k. And that's the end of continuity.